Hi guys, Beth Rist here. Um, I just want to touch base with a few things. I'm going to be talking about several things this week um, uh, pertaining to uh, the, the Lawrence County Jail and uh, uh, Narcan and um, Hot Shots and the Restraint Chair and several other things. Um, still looking into several things like uh, the accident that happened uh, on North 2nd. Uh, I did a video about it where I was on speakerphone where... Uh, the EMS and the fire department didn't show up. Well, I've also got pictures of uh, yesterday morning where there was a wreck and uh, the fire department was there and the EMS was there. Who calls these people off? Who who calls the fire department down and say, don't come, we got it? Who calls the EMS and say, don't come, we got it? You know, you when you arrive on a scene as a police officer, you don't know if anybody's hurt or not. Who are you to call and say, don't come? Okay. For 13 years, I worked every single accident the fire department came and the EMS came. I've got friends on the fire department, even though you think I don't. And I've got friends uh, that worked for EMS the whole entire time I was a cop. So, yes, they get the call every single accident. Now, although the fire department may not be needed, they stand there and they block the roads. You know, they come on every call. Why didn't they come on, on uh, the call on North 2nd Street? We'll get back to that. Okay, so anyway, um, <clears throat> what I got here is um, some simple, it's just on Google, and uh, I'm just going to, I'm not going to say it myself. You know, I think I've went over this over and over again. I know my glasses are glaring uh, because I've got candles lit in here, and it, it's, uh, it's, it's peaceful and quiet. You don't hear any noise, do you? Um, anyway, so um, let's see what it says here. Okay, what are the state requirements for a jail in the state of Ohio? Okay, each full-service jail, right there, all you got to do is Google it. Each full-service jail shall maintain the following minimum standards in regard to security of the jail. Okay, one, essential and established security peri perimeter. Two, essential in a minimum security jail. There shall be a defined controlled security perimeter. How are these people dying in jail if there's not a, a security perimeter? Are you getting me? Okay. 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 Let's go to uh, the Administrative Code, 51201-8, Ohio. Who regulates the county jails? Okay, here it is right here, honey, on Google. Well, she, I said Google when she thought I was going to talk to her. Anyway, I call her her because, you know. Statue of Liberty is her, so whatever. Anyway, the sheriff does. The sheriff shall have charge of the county jail and all persons confined therein. Now, I'm going to put that right up there. See it? The sheriff has control of every single inmate in his jail. Why have 23 people died in the last 16 years, Jeff? Why? Why are there no autopsy reports for uh, Bonnie Blevins Newcomb? Why did Scott Brown die? Why did Ed Kinsler die? I could go on and on all night. I'm right here. Okay. It says, that, let me repeat this. Um, the sheriff shall have charge of the county jail and all persons confined therein. He shall keep such persons safely. Oh, honey. Attend to the jail. Your office is not even in the jail. Where is your office? Anyway. Uh, according to the minimum standards for jails in Ohio, um, by the Department of Rehabilitation and Correction, this will be Chapter 341 of the High Revised Code, what are the three basic rules required of prisoners? Let's click on that. <laughs> what are the three basic rules required on prisoners? Don't escape or aid another to escape. Don't possess contraband and don't engage in disruptive behavior. Do you see that? Well, don't they search you for contraband when you first go in? And uh, don't, if you're in jail, um, <laughs> what are you going to do? How are you going to escape? Now, some people, just like Boyd County, um, you know, a lot of people escape over there because they have uh, the so-called authorities that uh, uh, help them. They might fall in love or they might just help you because they think that you're a great person. Yeah. Okay, 
Okay, let's go to this. What is rule 5120 in Ohio? Okay. The jail shall provide all inmates with hygiene articles and intake and replacement items to indigent inmates. Now, did you hear what I just said? The jail shall provide all inmates with hygiene articles at intake. That means when you get there, okay? Um, and replacement items to indigent inmates, those who cannot afford that, okay? Indigent people, okay? So, if you watch my interview with Alicia that was homeless, that was in the Lawrence County Jail, and, and she said on the video that when uh, females in the, in the jail were on their period and uh, that the, the jailers would, uh, and the deputies would come and throw pads at them and tampons at them and call them uh, derogatory names. What kind of human beings are you guys down there working at the jail? Are you kidding me? I mean, this is like Roots, the movie Roots. If you don't know what I'm talking about, then you don't. Uh, this is like uh, inhumane treatment down there, okay? So anyway, um, I'll say it one more time, okay? The jail shall provide all inmates with hygiene articles at intake and replacement items to indigent inmates. Now, I'm going to put it right here. Now, you can read it. Take your time. See it? It's on Google. G-O-O-G-L-E. Now, you heard Alicia say they throw it through the get through the bars and, and call you derogatory names. Okay, that's all right. That's okay. It'll, it'll be straightened out. So, anyway, um, which of the following has oversight responsibility for the county jail? Okay, let's click on that. Ultimately, sheriffs who have broad and direct authority over facility operations and county boards of supervisors <laughs> who allocate funding to sheriffs. That's, that's a key word right there. Who alloc allocate funding to the sheriffs. So if someone's funding your uh, livelihood, you're going to pretty much do what they say, don't you think? Uh, I wouldn't. Anyway... Uh, county boards of supervisors, which would be the uh, county commissioners, uh, who allocate funding to sheriffs are responsible for conditions inside county-operated detention facilities. Now, I'm going to put this right up there for you. It's real simple. See it? Google. Google. Okay. Let's, I don't know. She thought I was talking to her yet. Okay. Let's go back here. Mm, what is the 100 prisoner rule? Okay. Let's click on that. The 100 prisoners problem is a mathematical problem in probability theory and combinatorics. It, in this problem, 100 number of prisoners must find their own numbers in one of 100 drawers in order to survive. Okay. The rules state that each prisoner may open only 50 drawers and cannot communicate with other prisoners. Now, if you don't understand what that means, I'm, I'm hooked on phonics is all I can say. Okay. Um... How does the Eighth Amendment apply to inmates? Let's see what that says. Okay, one, two. Uh, prison officials have a legal duty under the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution to refrain from using excessive force and to protect prisoners from assault by other prisoners. Boys, and I do mean boys. Um, and I'm not talking about IPD right now. I'm talking about the Sheriff's Department. I don't care how old you are. Uh, if you act like a... a, a, a aggressive uh, idiot why you're supposed to be protecting these people just because they're in jail don't mean they're less than you are uh, who gives you, you the right to judge anybody just because you got that shiny little badge on that gun honey it takes five pounds of pressure to pull a trigger five pounds of pressure you can be 90 pounds a female blind and deaf and still pull a trigger okay so anyway okay Anyway, let me get back to where I was. Uh, uh, the Eighth Amendment of the Constitution to refrain from using excessive force and to protect prisoners from assault by other prisoners. Well, let's say you put a, ma a man or a male or a female in a restraint chair, okay? And you put a net over them, over their face. Now, I can totally understand with uh, understand that because um, I, if somebody has um, um, a disease or something that, if they spit in your eyes and you could get it, AIDS or whatever, um, I understand putting the net over your eyes. But when someone's restrained in that chair, and I will, I will, I think you've all seen it on the video from the Lawrence County 
sheriff's department where they they beat a man, Ed Kinsler, in a um, in a restraint chair. And and um, anyway, on one particular occasion, they tased a man that was in a restraint chair and videoed it, and videoed it, and laughed about it. Where are you at, sheriff? Where are you at? Checking out that brand new bike. Okay, so anyway, um, officers may not use force maliciously. Oh, guys. Officers may not use force maliciously, okay? Or sadistically. Now, you, Terry, honey, get a, a thesaurus out, and, and if you know what a thesaurus is, and look that up. With intent to cause harm, but they may use force in good faith efforts to keep order. They may use force in good faith efforts. What's a good faith effort? What's a good faith effort? I'll give you a minute. What's a good faith effort? Oh, God. Okay. Let's see what this says. <laughs> oh, there's so much to um, uh, cover. Okay. Oh, it talks about incarceration and can and, and can lead uh, to the loss of several important rights as well as person's physical freedom. Oh, that's a big thing, don't you think? Um, and yes, some people need to be in jail. Some people need to be in prison. But how many innocent people are put in Lawrence County Jail? And do they meet state requirements? No, they don't. How do they keep operating? How do they keep operating? Well, we'll get into that. Anyway, um, what's the maximum, what's the maximum of sentence in jail? Okay. Jail time for different types of crimes can vary from 48 hours to more than 10 years. Okay. Repeat offenders and those committing multiple violent crimes can serve a life sentence. So what determines the length of imprisonment in the prison system? The type of crime is the main factor. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God, are you guys blind? Are you are you not seeing what's going on here? Am I the only person that actually sees what's going on here? You see it, but you're afraid to say anything about it, you know. And Terry Nip got on Art Nodder got on my YouTube the other day, and he said, "Why don't you turn over the evidence you claim do you have to the authorities?" Well, why in the hell would I give IPD uh, what people? have entrusted me with. No, the right authorities up north have that evidence. You know, I'm not I'm not dumb enough. You know, somebody called down there and asked uh, Dan Johnson, the chief, um, you know, isn't it required that uh, it's protocol that every accident have a fire department and the EMS show up? And he said, well, he said, well, not, not, not necessarily. Dan, 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 Dan. You know, that's protocol, especially when two vehicles are totaled. It's who you are and who you know and who you are related to in this city and this county. Now, you can you can say whatever you want. I don't give a shit what you say. Okay. Uh. <laughs> oh, here's the thing. What does boss stand for in jail? A term used by inmates to refer to officers working as guards. Now, boss, isn't that any something similar to master in the slavery days? Wouldn't you think? You know? Oh, my God. Okay. So, uh, what does K-10 mean? Uh, it means high jail security risk. Mm. This classification shall be utilized for inmates who, based on confirmed information. Confirmed information from who? A snitch? Like Shane Blanton? who got 81 years, 81.5 years in prison after he was a snitch uh, for 20 years, beating up kids and women and getting by with it because of who his aunt was. Yeah, I'm talking about you. You know I am. Um, so anyway, um, <laughs> K-10 inmates shall be housed in a single man cells and be waist-chained while being transported. Okay. Okay. K-10 
kite. What does kite, K-I-T-E, mean in a prison term? An informal message or a complaint. According to one theory, the term originated in the mid-1800s, okay? When prisoners were not allowed to speak and instead pass messages to each other using kite-branded cigarette rolling papers, okay? I think we've all seen movies about that. Who fights for the inmates' rights? Let's see who that does, okay? Well, I just got off the phone with ACLU uh, yesterday. Uh, the ACLU uh, fights for the prisoners' rights. National Prison Project. project, project. So if you have a problem, uh, if something's happened to your loved one in, in any jail, not just Lawrence County, uh, contact the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union. Just Google it. Um, if not, I've got the number right here. I'll post it on my community page. Um, oh, my God. Okay. Anyway, the ACLU will, will handle it. Um, what are the four legal foundations of prisoners' rights? Let's see what this is, okay? Prisoners' rights have four legal foundations. The U.S. Constitution, federal statutes, state constitutions, and state stat statutes. Do they really? Okay. Now, I'm finding all this on Google, so it's uh, it's really easy to find it yourself. I'm just, I'm not going to say things per se what I mean, what I think. I'm going to give it straight from the Google here. And we already, we already went through the three basic rules. Don't escape. And don't aid another to escape. Well, how in the hell... Are you going to escape when there's uh, 20, 30 people in one cell on top of each other? And you heard a, a, a guy that I interviewed, Russ, that uh, had been in jail when it was summer. And it was 75, 80 degrees out. And they kept the temperature down there 45 degrees and give you a wool blanket. Well, okay. You know, these people are tortured enough out on the streets. And, and you want to, I mean, it's just, it's such a, it's such a, uh Oh, my God. Stay with me. I'm just, I'm just making sure of the facts here. So, let's, let's listen to this, okay? It says, um, you know, if, if, if each cell down at the Lawrence County Jail doesn't have cameras in it, is that state requirements? Um, um, I uh, spoke with a gentleman. Uh, that uh, does uh, a lab work and goes in the jails all over the state of Ohio. And 90% uh, uh, of, the, of the people that come out of the Lawrence County Jail end up with meningitis because they're not given water. They drink, they drink water out of the back of the toilet, which gives them meningitis, okay? Now, you can say whatever you want to say about it, but I spoke to this person individually, and I know it's true. So just just keep on doing whatever. Just deny it all you want to. Your livelihood's at stake here, okay? Not a threat by me. Do your damn job, okay? A defendant, listen, what type, which type of sentence is the three strikes law? Remember the three strikes law? A defendant with two or more strike priors, a third striker, whoo, faces a minimum of 25 years to life in prison. A third striker. But yet you can be a cop and be arrested for fentanyl and meth drug trafficking and get 12 months at a resort. You know, protection. The cops always go to a, a place where all cops go to. So, And I understand that, you know, because the people they put in jail uh, might kill them. Is what it is, isn't it? Okay. So, the three-strike rule, that means nothing to me. Uh, they don't follow that. I mean, you know, shit. Uh, they don't. Mm -hmm. uh, we've already went through. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, 
Two prior serious or violent felony convictions count as individual strikes on a person's criminal history. Who at CPS has uh, two felony uh, crack cocaine um, uh, violations and is telling you how to treat your kids? That's that's not good. Okay, so we'll get back to that on another video. Um, so here we go. Basic rights of an inmate. Uh, while incarcerated, people do lose some of their constitutional rights, such as the right to free speech or expectation of privacy. Well, of course you're not going to have privacy, you know. I interviewed Larry McClellan months ago, and he was arrested as a child down there when the police department was on Market Street. And he told in the video, there's a little hole in the floor where you have to urinate and uh, poop in a hole in front of everybody. How degrading is that? They can't put a damn toilet in there for you? What in the hell? Um, anyway, it says, uh, however, state and federal laws require inmates or are afforded some basic rights. Some of the basic rights prisoners include the right to humane conditions. Now, there it is right there. You see that? The right to humane conditions. Why are these people drinking out of the back of the toilet and getting meningitis? Why are these people dying? Why are these people hanging in jail? at the hands of other people, and, and the, the jailer smokes a cigarette and looks at his cell phone waiting for that person to die. Do you people think that these people don't talk to people and contact people? Nah, it's going to be hot down there, kids. It's going to be hot. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Who fights for inmate rights? Let's see what that says. Just like I said, the ACLU. Um... And the AELE -E Jail and Prisoner Law Resources. The National Institute of Corrections Documents on Rights of Inmates. National Reentry Resource Center. You know what that is, don't you? The National Reentry Resource Center. Now, is that where you go uh, waiting to be released? I'll let you figure that out. Okay, anyway. Um, uh, who do we have around here in the county or in the city? That, uh, that's a civil rights attorney. Who do we have? Think about it. Who do we have? Do we have any civil rights attorneys in Ironton or Lawrence County? Okay. Okay. Let's uh let's go here to jail rules and regulations. Okay. Now this is Ross Ross County, so we'll, we'll, we'll wait. Well, let's go back and find Lawrence County. Let's just go to minimum standards for jails in Ohio. Okay, seventy. Uh, okay, right here it says. Look there, see it? Minimum standards for jails in Ohio: seventy-two hour facility. Seventy-two hour facility. Okay, annotation and. Uh, minimum standards for all local jails in Ohio as uh, promulgated in 1978 or as revised in 1980 by the Bureau of Adult Detention Facilities and Services are presented. Abstract. The, stan the standards represent a consensus of professional opinion based upon extensive research of legal requirements, existing standards, and practical experience. They are considered to be the minimum conditions necessary to ensure the safe Efficient, effective, and legal operation of a jail. Why do you die in jail? If you are checked prior to going to your cell, and you heard Alicia on her video, they take women's underwear, and, and you know, uh, and they check you. You know, once um, I had a, a dispatcher in the women's locker room um, at IPD, and uh, you know, yeah. A woman actually had a, a 380 pistol, and uh, it dropped out. Yeah, so I understand that. They check that. They do cavity searches, but you... you mm, okay. So, anyway, we'll go down through here and see what we got here. Um, okay, so let's do... Uh, Okay, it says right here, 
5120, 1-801-5120, 1-12-19 of the Administrative Code. The standards apply to county jails, municipal jails, regional jails, and workhouses. Each such facility falls within one of the following categories and is subject to the standards identified within the definitions applicable to those categories. Full service jail. A local confinement facility used primarily to detain adults for more than 288 hours. The standards set forth in Rule 5121-8-01, 5121-8-01, Eighteen of the administrative code apply to full service jails, and then it goes on to talk about you can get all this on Ohio Laws Legislative uh, Service Commission. You see it right there; it's all online. It's not me telling you people; it's all right here. Excuse me. Um. So anyway, um, let's say, let's just say, um, excuse me. Let's just say, now, now I'll be doing a, a video um, about the restraint chairs, and, um, you know, um, and I'll be doing a, a, a I'll be mentioning uh, how many times you put your, all of your items, like an iPhone 15 or a North Face uh, jacket or brand new tennis shoes in that little Tupperware thing that they put in the closet there and they lock it. How many of you have got out of jail and had nothing given back to you? Nothing. No phone. No. Who takes that? Who who has access to that? Who takes your shit while you're in jail? Who takes it? Who takes your wallet when you get arrested? Tim Lyon, Sarah Page. Had their wallet taken. Did they ever get it back? No. And we'll be doing a whole nother thing on that. Getting pulled over on private property and what, what that consists of. And um, we'll be doing a whole nother video on that. I, I have got so much information, and uh, like I said earlier in my video with uh, uh, my stain on the shirt, you know, um, has anybody, ever since the election, has anybody heard uh, anything from the mayor? Uh, have you heard anything? Uh, the only thing that uh, I've seen is that he um, uh, sweared in Brandon Blankenship as captain, and then he's only, uh, Blankenship's only been there for three years. Well, when I was a cop, it took me nine years to be there to even take the sergeant's test. So that should tell you a little bit about how these young guys um, are corrupt and resign and move right down to Cold Grove or Hanging Rock, South Point, Chesapeake, Brockville, Athalia. You know, not like it used to be. Nobody wants to be a cop anymore. Nobody wants, it, it's a bad rep. It's a really bad rep. Back the blue until it happens to you. That's exactly what, that's exactly what. But anyway, I am um, I'm gonna be uh, doing several things this week, and um, I'm gonna be doing a panel soon. Um, there's just so much information on the internet, and uh, um, you know I don't want to have to. Uh, I'm not gonna sit here and uh, jerk your chain on what I believe and what I don't believe. I think everybody pr pretty much knows how I feel about everything. I don't give a shit. And you know, Art Nauter said. Why don't you turn all that information into the public authorities? I said, why don't you turn those 30 videos that you said you had on the cops that they didn't want to see? And he said, I didn't say that. Eugene did. Well, Eugene wasn't the art and auditor. Terry, honey, why, why was your final ride? Nobody wanted to ride with you anymore, did they? Because you're an idiot. You're just an idiot. And I think I pretty much explained that. Anyway, people listen. Um... You know, I I am not <laughs> I am not the type of person uh, to um, be um, evil to people. But man, somebody's got to stand up and say, "Look what is going on here," you know. And you know, Terry said, "Quit saying you're not afraid." Well, I'm not afraid, Terry. What are you afraid of, honey? Um, I'm sure when you walk down the street, you look back and see your shadow and just run like a fucking cat. Um, it's your shadow, honey. It will follow you anywhere. Okay? Think, people think. Okay? So, anyway, I'm going to get off here for now. Um, I might come back in a little bit. Um, uh, I might or I may not. It's just whatever I want to do. I'm not on a timeline. I'm on my timeline. You know? I don't... I'm not on here to, um, uh, 
do 12 videos a day. That's not my agenda. That's not my priority, you know? Um, it's just not. It's just not. And, uh, but anyway, um, I did uh, open a, a private group on Facebook today, and uh, only by invitation, and I will, I will not tolerate any bullshit on there, um, you know, and I know, uh, I will know if, if it's true blue who you are, and, and I'm not going, I'm not trying to get uh, 60, 70, 100 people on my group channel to argue. I'm not doing that. I'm simply going to share uh, things I don't want to share on my Facebook, you know. So anyway, um, I've got a new publisher, and um, um, things are going good in my favor, and I thank God for that. And I will get back to you, uh, if not tonight, tomorrow, okay? Meanwhile, you just post away on there, okay? And, um, you know, it is what it is. Nothing more and nothing less. God bless. Beth Rist, Ironton, Ohio.